A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. And he answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. And she said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. This famous story, <clears throat> the story of the Canaanite woman and its, um, its related story, the Syrophoenician woman, has a woman who is not supposed to be Jesus' concern uh, because of who she is, where she comes from. She is not understood to be somebody who could reasonably, reasonably make a claim on Jesus' time. Um, and the disciples say that, and she knows it herself. And even Jesus says, um, I don't want to get involved in any mission creep here. I'm here to do one thing, and sorry, um, but you're not my concern. I don't even think he said sorry. He just said you're not my concern. And so we have this story in a couple of different ways, and, and I've heard it interpreted um, with a lot of emphasis on that woman. She really gave him what for, that plucky lucky woman and she schooled Jesus, didn't she? And that doesn't seem particularly reasonable to me that God would need to have God's eyes opened, nor does it seem to me reasonable to think that um, God had one thought in mind and then suddenly, by virtue of this one exchange, has changed God's mission. I do think what might be possible is that um, this conversation needed to happen in front of disciples and others so that they could understand that God's mission was broader than what was more narrowly focused. But that all belongs to a longer sermon. What I want to say this morning is this. What strikes me about this story is that this woman did not allow her own self-perception of her place with Jesus or God, nor did she allow the perception of other people's opinion about whether or not she had any business addressing God or Jesus. She did not let that keep her from asking for what she wanted, for what she desperately needed, which was the life of her daughter to be spared. She asked anyway. And if you stop and think about it, and I, I may be completely wrong, and maybe I don't have the whole Bible at the tip of my fingers today, but I'm pretty sure that this, this action of asking is really central to so many of the stories of healing that we get in the Gospels. Um, maybe one of them, I mean, there's, there's the guy who has all his friends drag him in and pull him through the, the roof and put him in front of Jesus. But for the most part, you've got, you've got folks who ask Jesus for what they want. You have people who are reaching out and touching the hem of his robe, as we just had a couple of days ago. You have um, people who come from all walks of life, and one thing they share is that they ask Jesus for what they want, for what they need. And that's your and my part in this story. Whatever Jesus was up to, if this was a teaching moment, if Jesus really was like, oh, maybe I should do something more than just the children of Israel, whatever that is, I think the part for you and me this day is to really focus in on this part of asking, asking and not letting our own perceptions of whether or not we have a right to ask. We're letting other people's perception of whether or not we have a right to ask. Not letting that stand in the way of what so many people in the Bible who have experienced healing and grace of God through Jesus. Um, <clears throat> not standing in the way of asking for what we want and receiving God's grace and what we need. Um, many people have all sorts of built up ideas about what we have a right to ask for ourselves. Usually we're the, usually we're the stingiest with ourselves, not so much with other people. And so that's something worth our attention this day. Is there something that you feel is important to you that you need, that you want, that you want to ask God's help and you've allowed 
your narrative or somebody else's narrative about you to get in the way of you asking? If so, let that um, Canaanite woman inspire us all to ask God for what we need, ask God for what we want, ask God for what is most important in our lives uh, for ourselves or on behalf of others close to us, and let God uh, decide if that's outside of God's mission or not. We may just have the same answer that the Canaanite woman got in today's exchange. May God be with you as you search your heart and your own belief systems. May God be with you in having courage to lift up and to ask for what you need, ask for what you want, for what you desire. And may God bless you and may God bless and keep you this day and always. Amen. <laughs>